Hello, lovies. This is an exciting day. Are you excited? Yes, it's an exciting day because we're going to learn our last wall card. After this, you'll have learned all of the sounds and the sound spellings that are in our English language. Now, look at today's last wall card. I think they saved the funniest for the last. This is Roy the coil. And if you look at his body, his body is a coil. It's like a spring. And you remember that the sound he makes is going to be in his name. So Roy the coil. Oi, oi, oi. Isn't that a funny sound? Roy the coil makes the oi sound. And there's two ways we can spell it. The first one is going to be O-Y. When you see it, you'll say oi, and you're going to know a lot of these words. How about, yeah, boy, I think you should know that word. And take a look. Uh, I was trying to decide what picture to use for boy. Then I decided I'd use everybody's picture for boy. You are a great boy. And another great word, toy, sure. Everybody knows what that is, toy. Joy, exactly right. And joy means to be happy. We sing that song, I've got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Joy is being happy. There's great joy there. Uh, you were playing with your daddy. Joy. Now, whoopsie, enjoy. I'm going to try to do something I haven't done before. Instead of a picture, I'm going to give you a little video of enjoy. I think you will see Does it look like those boys enjoyed their bath? All right. The next word, royal, royal. Royal means it has to do with the kings and the queens. If you go to a royal dance, then it's uh, where the king and the queen will be. Now, a word that's going to rhyme with royal is... Loyal. And loyal is a real important word. It means you're going to be true. In a family, we're loyal to each other. We're loyal. We're not going to let anything come between us. We will always love each other. We are loyal to each other. And some people say a dog is very loyal. A dog always loves you. Oi, you ready for the rest of it? St -er, oyster. You know what an oyster is. It's an animal that lives in a shell, and he lives on the bottom floor of the ocean. And when he opens his mouth, you can see he opened his mouth a little because he eats little, I don't know, things that fly by, swim by. But sometimes one grain of sand might get in his mouth and stay there instead of getting washed out by the ocean water. And if that happens, the oyster hates it. And he doesn't like it touching him at all. So his body builds up almost like um, mucus, like we have in our nose sometimes. It builds something, it sends something out and makes a a case around that little teeny tiny piece of, of sand and to protect it so that it doesn't touch the oyster's body. And it keeps going and it keeps going. And the longer it's there, the bigger it gets. And there you can see, you can see the body of the oyster, that little slimy thing, which people eat and love. 
and there is a pearl. After the oyster has begun building that around that piece of sand because he hates it, when we open up the shell, we could find a pearl. And then, of course, you take a lot of those pearls and you can make jewelry out of them, necklaces and bracelets and rings. So what starts out as something bad for the oyster turns out something good for us, oyster. All right, this is our last OY word, and I saved it to the last because it is a word I do not like. I love enjoy, I love loyal and talking about those things. This word is annoy. Annoy means to bug somebody. I just found a cartoon picture. I would never want to use a picture, a real picture of someone I know who was trying to annoy someone because it's unkind. So now we have Roy the Coil and we know about O-Y, oi. And now we're going to go to his second spelling, which is O-I, oi. They're both going to say oi. And, sure, oil, mm -hmm. oil, and oil can be two things. If it's oil that we're going to use in our car for gasoline, then that comes out of the ground, and it's thick and black and gooey, and they process it. They send it someplace and make it cleaner and, and thinner, and then we can use it in our cars. That's oil for cars. Then we have oil that we use in food, like olive oil. Those are from olives. You can also make oil when you squeeze other kinds of vegetables. And of course, olive oil and oil that we use on our food tastes very nice. Don't put oil that was meant for cars on your food, okay? Uh-huh. Oink. Oink. Boil, very good, boil, and you boil eggs. You know that the water is starting to boil when the bubbles come to the top. Boil. This is another kitchen word, broil. When you broil something in the oven, the heat is just on the top. So if I wanted to put a cheese sandwich in and just melt that cheese a little bit or nachos or whatever these guys are cooking, the heat is going to be just on the top. When we bake, the heat comes from the bottom. Oh, this is a great one. Coil, Roy the Coil, it's the middle part of his name, and... Every time you're in your bed, you are really on top of coils, those springs that are inside the mattress we don't even see, but it keeps the mattress bouncy. You know about those slinky coils, all kinds of coils, goes around and around. And what is soil? Sure, it's dirt. Yeah. Good for growing plants and for making messes on boys' faces. Soil. Sp oil. Spoil can mean two different things. It can mean food that has spoiled, you've left it out or it's gotten too old, it'll spoil. Or sometimes we say if you get everything you want and all at once. You might spoil the child. That girl looks like she might be spoiled. You know, Eli knows all about that word, delayed gratification. It means I'm going to wait to get something that's wonderful. I won't get them all at once. If you get everything, you might spoil that child, and she won't appreciate it. Look at this word. I love it. Three sounds, ch, oi, s, choice, and he has a choice. You know, all day long, we have choices on what we're going to do. 
We make choices all day long. We just want to make sure we make good choices. Moist. Moist means like damp. It's not drippy drippy when this sponge wipes up that water. It's not going to be drippy wet. It'll be moist. The, the baby wipes that moms use. They're not dry because then they'd have a hard time cleaning off the skin of a baby. They're moist. They're just a little bit wet. Moist. Join. Sure. And you can join things together. Those bricks were joined together with uh, cement, uh, concrete maybe. And looks like this guy might be making a boat. He's going to glue all those things to join them together. And these friends joined themselves together by wrapping their arms around each other. That's a happy picture. So that's join. And now we have joint. Joint. And that's where two things come together. The joint is where these two pieces of wood are going to come together. And if you look we can't look inside our arm at our bones, but wherever you have a place on your body where two bones come together and they move, that's a joint. In your elbow, you have a joint because your elbow is where you get those two bones move. That's where they meet each other. How about your knee? Mm -hmm. Can you think of another place that might have a joint on your body? Shoulder might. Think about your ankle. Can you wiggle your foot? Then there's a joint there. Good. Oil, sure. Aluminum foil. We use that a lot in the kitchen. Coins. Mm -hmm. You know, every country has their own coins. They don't all use our coins, but those are the coins we use. Do you remember how much they're worth? Penny is worth one cent. Nickel is worth five. A dime is ten. A quarter is twenty-five. Now take a look. I don't know why, because I didn't get to make the rules, you know, but look at the size of our coins. If I put them in order of their size, the dime would be first. So sometimes people try to trick you to see if you know how much they're worth. And I might say, would you like this little dime or this big nickel? And you might think, ooh, that nickel is bigger, so it's probably worth more. But it isn't. Isn't that crazy? Voice. Yep, your voice, noise, oh, a lot of noise, point, uh-huh, Reagan, you're going to point at that dolphin, Reagan, sorry, I couldn't put your picture up with all those boy pictures, poi, son, poison, now, sometimes when you think of poison, you think of things where people try to poison. But, you know, a lot of good things that we use around our house, they're meant to be used outside your body. But if you put them inside your body, they could be poison. And sometimes we have those stickers to put on things so that you'll know, don't mess with this. It's poison. Also, medicines. If a medicine is very good for my body because my body needs it, but your body does not, if you took my medicine, then it could be poison for you. It would make you sick. All right, we have finished all the wall cards. And so I want to go straight through our wall cards and show you them and remind you a couple of things because the wall cards, by looking at the wall cards, it really helps you remember some things. All right, we're gonna start with Pam the Lamb, ah, and I want you to notice down at the bottom, the A is written in a green box. 
the short vowels are all going to have a green box. When I do B, 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 bouncing ball, and K, K, clicking camera. Now, take a look at clicking camera. You know that C and K make that same sound. And now look at C, K. Do you notice there's a little green box? That means when you use CK, you have to have a short vowel first. So it can be any of the short vowels. You'll see there are several patterns like that on our wall cards. So every time you see that little green box, it means you need to put a short vowel there. All right, D, dancing dinosaur, E, E, pecking hen. Take a look at short E. There's that green box. Short E is the only short vowel that has two spellings. All the rest only have one. You know, when we get to long vowels, there'll be lots of spellings. And you know, with long E, two vowels go walking. So EA can say E when we get to long vowels, or it can say E, eh, E. Eh. So when you come to it in a word that you do not know, you just need to try one and then try the other. An, th, fanning, fan, f, f, those two ways you can spell. Goblin, go for g, g. Hound dog, h, h. Ticklish pig, i, i. Jumping, jump rope, j, j. Take a look. Remember G-E and G-I? We're going to see that same kind of spelling later with C-E and C-I. And look at D-G-E. Which, what does that green box mean? You're going to need a short vowel. Exactly right. All right. Clicking camera again. Isn't that crazy? We have two letters in our alphabet, and they make the same sound. I don't know why we did that. Lapping lion, l. Munching monkey, m. Now you see those other spellings with lines through them. We'll get to those. Noisy nest, n. n. <clears throat> Bob the fox, ah, ah. Popping corn. Quacking duck, r racing robot, sizzling sausage, you see the C E and C I, t t ticking timer, a uh, tug boat, a a a vacuuming vacuum. W washing washer, exiting X. Now take a look. There are no words in English that start with X. Exiting X makes the X sound. You need a vowel first, and then you can make that X sound like ox or ax. Yakking yak, zipping zipper. Then we had stinky skunk, nk, nk, ing, ng. They both need green boxes. You need to put a vowel first, like ing or ang, like rang. Okay? Now, these next four are called digraphs. I always group them together because they have H, a letter, and then H. We have sh, shiny shell, thread and thimble, ch, chattering chipmunk, and whispering whale. All right, do you notice the second letter is H? Those are called digraphs. You don't really need to remember that. I didn't learn that till I was already a teacher. But those are digraphs. The next ones are called variant vowels. 
And instead of a green box for short vowels, or later we'll have yellow boxes for long vowels, variant vowels are a letter, uh, a vowel, and another letter. Now, we have gargling armadillo, R, my favorite curly bird, er, and stork with a horn, or. So take a look at all of those spellings. What do you notice? They all have a vowel and then R. A, E, I, O, U, all of the vowels with an R. So we call them variant vowels. Now also, remember gooey goo, oo, oo, and I told you they had the same spellings as long u, so I don't even care about that. I care about oo, and hook in the foot, oo, uh, brown cow, ow, do you see vowels? Clawing hawk, aw, uh, and Roy the coil, oi, oi. Then we had long vowels, and they say their names. So, A can be two vowels go walking, or remember the signal, the silent E. All of our long vowels have silent E or a signal, A blank E, sometimes I call it. E, I, remember they both had Y. And if a word is small, usually the Y at the end is going to say I. If a word is longer, has two claps or more syllables, usually the Y at the end is going to say E. A, E, I. What's coming next? O. And U. I end with U. I love you. Very Good reading. Look at those cowboys. I know that rodeo was fun. See you later, alligator. Dance and sing, little red wing. And when I've been feeding the ducks in the backyard, we've had a little red wing black bird. That's what that bird is called, red wing blackbird. Come and get little pieces of bread, and he's become a little friend of mine. I love you. Have a good day.